yourself. There are some people here who are very independent. And they don't want anybody to help. They want to try to figure it out on their own. I got this. Well, sometimes God will get your attention and let you know that you don't have it. Amen. 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 There are some things we cannot handle without the help of God. In life, we all get in those situations where we don't know what to do. We don't know where to turn or what to do. Whatever the question is in your life, whatever your what do I do moment is, I can guarantee you that God is the answer. Any question you have, He is always the answer. I want to start a series of sermons today. I always give my series a title, and the only title I could come up with for this one was, What to Do When? Because I have no idea what I want to get into, except for today's. I have today's. What to do when? And I have two goals for this series. Number one, I want us to realize that God never changes, and He has a plan for our life, and He will not fail. Your circumstances might change, your finances might change, your relationships might change, your hair might change. But God never changes. Whether it's a mountaintop or a valley, God never changes. He never changes and He will not fail. There are some things that God can't do and God cannot fail. He cannot lie and He cannot fail. The second goal is for us to become less focused on our needs. Because let's admit we're all about ourselves. Everybody say me. Amen. All about me. The second goal is for us to become less focused on our needs and become more focused on giving God thanks in every situation and seeking His move for our lives. Those are my two goals of this series. I want to kick off the series today with a look at this the title of my message. What to do when you are confused. What to do when you are confused? How many people here today have ever been in a situation where you were just totally confused? Maybe you're there now. I mean, you were just like, ah, oh, God, I just, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know which way to turn. I don't know what I'm going to do. I was in a situation the other day with some kids in the house. They came back up. I was like, God, I don't know what to do anymore. But sometimes it's a little more serious than just some kids that are after that. We get in situations in our life where we are confused. I want everybody to scratch your head. I want everybody to look confused. Believe it or not, that's how we look a lot of times in life. Those situations where we just scratch our heads and we don't have any promises when somebody might come and say, well, they all scratch their head right now. Sometimes we go through those times where we just scratch our head. We just stand there and say, Lord, you're just going to have to answer this because I don't know. I don't know which way to turn. Maybe you have a decision to make. We all have decisions to make. Amen? Sometimes we want people to make it for us, but sometimes we've got to step up and take accountability. Maybe you have a decision to make and you really don't know which way to turn. Maybe you've already made a decision and you really thought that the decision you made was the right one. But now it seems like everything's just falling apart. You're starting to wonder, I'm confused, Lord. I thought this was what you wanted. Or maybe it could be that there's some things in your life that are just beyond your control. And you don't understand. I'm confused. I don't know why this happened. And this is one I know everybody here can relate to. Maybe you got some people in your life that make you feel confused. Amen? Amen. Do you ever have people come in your life and you're like, I just don't get them. I just don't understand them. They're crazy. I don't know. And just when you think you got to figure it out, they do something crazy. <laughs> we all have those people. There are times that things just don't make sense and we go through that time of confusion. And I want to assure you this morning, whatever you're facing, that you might be confused about this morning, God is with you. And it's going to be alright. I want to go to our scripture. Everybody turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. Please stand when you get there. I want you to stand in there to the word. Matthew 26. Be reading from the Anami. 
We are going to look at the night before Jesus went to the cross. Matthew 26, 36 through 46. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, make this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you then keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word this morning. We thank you for each and every person who is here in worship today. God, I know that every time we come through the doors, we shouldn't expect what we expected last Sunday because today is a new day. And we want to do a new thing here in our service. I just pray that those who might be here this morning who are going through some things and, and they feel torn, maybe they're at a crossroads, maybe they've got decisions to make, maybe they don't understand some things that are going on in their lives right now. I just pray that we will give them a peace today before they leave this place. And we worship you and magnify you, anoint my lips, my voice, my mind, and my heart. Let me speak when you say speak, and be silent when you say be still. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Here we have Jesus in the darkest hour of his life. Now, I want to kind of set the stage for you a little bit so you can see where Jesus is probably at at this time. Jesus has had kind of a rough week. Anybody here had a rough week? Oh, okay. Jesus had a rough week. Started out with it, but it kind of got worse. You ever had those weeks? Monday was great. By the time you get to Saturday and Sunday, you're like, Lord, what happened? On Sunday, Jesus had entered Jerusalem with a parade of people worshiping again. But on Wednesday, Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, one he loved and mentored, and spent time with, decided to go to the chief priest to trade Jesus for some money. Then on Thursday, Jesus is with his disciples at what we call the Last Supper. And you know, even then, Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. Jesus, Jesus knew that the disciples that he was meeting with on that day we're going to one by one flee and desert him and deny that they ever knew him. Imagine what Jesus must be feeling. These 12 disciples who he loved are about to desert him. And God keeps saying, this is my view, this is my plan. You need to suffer and you need to die. Now I don't know about you, but if I were in Jesus' shoes, I would probably feel a little confused. You know, we, we, have, we have parents here in the sanctuary this morning. If you're not a parent, you have a parent. What would you do if your mom or your dad said, look, you know, there's a whole lot of people that's got a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of sin, and I think you need to pay the sacrifice. I think you need to suffer and you need to die. I don't know about you, but I'd be saying, look, you love me. That's a funny way of showing it. Amen? I believe that Jesus, the night before he went to the cross, I believe that Jesus experienced every emotion that we could ever feel. 
you. I believe that Jesus experienced fear. I believe that Jesus experienced concern and worry and confusion. I truly believe that he did. But I also believe that this story gives us three principles that we can use when we are confused. What to do when you are confused. And I want to give you those. This isn't going to be one of those long run out sermons today. I've learned if I can keep you guys 30 minutes, I'm doing good. So uh, I want to give you three principles today. What to do when you are confused. Number one, stop and recognize God is good and He will not leave you confused. I don't care what you're going through, God is still good. And He is not going to leave you where you are. One of the greatest words I ever received from a minister when I was in probably my darkest hour, and it, it still to this day I think about that moment. I was in a church service. I was going through a horrible, horrible time of depression. I was about as low as I could feel. And somebody walked up to me. This was all they said, but it was powerful. They walked up to me and said, God said to tell you, it will always be this way. Some of you need to hear that this morning. Whatever you're going through, it won't always be this way. Because God always comes to the rescue. Amen? Amen. Psalms 32 and 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Jesus has his eye on you. Sometimes if you have something with everybody else, it don't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks of you. Jesus has his eye on you. And he's promised you that no matter what you're going through, he's going to teach you and he's going to instruct you. Some of you feel really desperate about a situation in your life right now. There is no place like a place of desperation. But you know sometimes God has to take us there to get us where he wants to take us. But you have to be careful in your time of confusion not to play God. Because when we get confused, we get overwhelmed, and the first thing we want to do is just do something. Well, I'm confused, and God hasn't given me an answer. I'm tired of thinking about it. I'm tired of trying to figure out. I'm just going to play any, any, money, money. I'm going to pick something, and I'm going to do it. We've all been guilty of that. I'm tired of waiting. Here I go, God. I'm going to do this, and you take care of it. And then we fall flat on our faces. I was like, okay, now I'm going to take care of it when you trust me. When you lean on me. See, we do crazy things when we are confused. A lot of times when people do crazy things, I'm like, well, they was confused and just got tired trying to weigh on God so they just did their own thing. God says, I will teach you and I will instruct you. If you have a decision to make, if you are confused about something in your life, you need to turn to the Lord and let Him teach you and let Him instruct you. And I love this. We use it all the time. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Don't worry about anything. But pray and ask God for everything you need. Some of you need to stop worrying. I know nobody worries that much, but some of you need to stop. Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about your bills. Don't worry about your kids. Don't worry about your job. Don't worry about this church. Don't worry about what people say about you. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. And that is exactly what Jesus did. When we looked at our scripture, what did he tell his disciples? He said, you stay here, and I'm going to go pray. Sometimes we get in situations, we get all bent out of shape, and you know, sometimes even here in the church when we've been through some of our battles, sometimes it might be a good idea when we're like, I don't know what we're going to do about the money, I don't know what we're going to do about this or that, for somebody to just step up and say, you talk, you can stay right here if you want to, but I think I'm going to go pray. Amen. 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 Jesus prayed. Why did Jesus pray? Number one, I think Jesus was scared and confused. And number two, Jesus prayed because he knew that if he would surrender, that 
God would guide him, that God would instruct him. The only one who can truly comfort you when you are confused is God. It's good to have friends to talk to. It's good to call your pastor. It's, it's good to maybe go to support groups. I support all of those things. God provides all those things for us to have. But when you really get down to it and you need direction, it's God who needs to guide you. It really is. Number two, seek God in your situation. James 1 and 5 says, If any of you is lacking wisdom, ask God who gives to all ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. You see, once you realize that God is the answer, everybody say, God is the answer. Right. I'm hoping you got that much so far. Once you realize that God is the answer, then you need to start seeking Him. Then you need to start saying, okay, God, I know, I finally get it. You're the one I need to turn to. Now I, I need to seek you. Our scripture says that Jesus threw himself on the ground. Now, I don't know about you, but that tells me that Jesus didn't go to the Lord and say, okay, God, I need some answers, I'm confused, I'm scared, and I need to quit. So speak to me. To me, that was a sign of surrender and humility. He was at a place where he just threw himself on the ground. He was there to spend some time with God. He was there to seek God. As a matter of fact, the scripture says he kept going back. Some of you pray one time about something in your life and you got upset because God didn't answer and you're angry with God. Well, why don't you keep going back? Amen? Amen? Jesus planned to see God. He planned to spend some quality time with God. And somebody sitting here saying, you know, I'm just not much. I don't pray much. I, I just, and you know, it doesn't really matter. Your prayers don't have to be long, drawn out prayers. But every day, seek you. You might be surprised at what you have to say to him if you just get in a quiet place. And start, you might be surprised what he might have to say to you. See, sometimes we just want to talk to God, but we don't want to listen. Just like my kids. They want to talk to God, but they don't want to open up their ears and hear. It's interesting how, if we're in a place where we're confused, we can go out to eat with some of our friends and talk about our situation for hours. We want to listen. I mean, we don't care if we've got to sit in our back for three or four hours and talk about our problem and hear what they have to say. But then we want to come to the altar and in five seconds, if God has us in then we go back to our seat. You have to seek Him. He is the answer, but you have to keep talking to Him. You have to listen for His voice. Get in your prayer closet. We've all heard a saying come out of the closet. Some of you need to go back in. <laughs> Some of you need to get in that prayer closet and seek God. Amen? Yeah. Somebody's like, I've never been in there in the first place. But maybe you ought to try it sometimes. Because I'm going to tell you, I had, a lot, I had a really busy week, and it was when I finally got in a quiet place last night by myself, just me and God, that He began to speak. Some of you need to start finding that quiet place and see God. And you know, God will answer in so many different ways. Sometimes when you begin to seek Him and you start spending quality time with Him, it'll, it'll be there. He'll just speak to you while you're praying and the thought will come to your heart and your mind. Or sometimes He'll give you a scripture or sometimes He'll send somebody along unexpectedly to uplift you and encourage you. And sometimes he just changes the circumstances. I've been in those situations where I thought, God, you know, something needs to be done. I really don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I keep seeking God and seeking God, and something unexpected will happen. And I'll be like, well, God just took care of that. God's like that. Amen? And my third and final point, submit your desires to God 
and place your trust in Him. Submit your desires to God. We don't want that word submit, do we? Jesus prayed, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Is nowhere near what God wants. And sometimes we try to talk him into it. You ever done that with God? Well, God, I understand why you probably don't want this, but let me, let me just give you my point of view. See it my way. As if we are smarter than God Almighty. Amen. But Jesus submitted to the Father's will. I guarantee you, he did not look forward to what he was about to go through. Who would it? And I was thinking about that this morning. I was like, now that is submission. How many of us could have done that? How many of us could have done the suffering and the agony that Jesus was getting ready to go through and still said, okay, God, if this is really what you want, I'll do it. We don't even like to get out of bed on Sunday morning when God tells us to. Go to church. Can you imagine submitting to that? But what a blessing Jesus' obedience has been for each and every one of us. Think of how it's changed our lives. What it boils down to is Jesus trusted God. Jesus trusted God. I have some kitties in this little basket here. We're going to use them here in a minute. I don't know if I have enough. But that's okay. You give God a penny. What's that thing you see in the stores? Need a penny, take a penny, God. A penny, give a penny. So if you've got a penny, an extra one this morning, throw it in there. If you will look on the penny, it's really small, and I think it should be the largest thing on the penny. What does it say about God? Yeah, yeah. In God we trust. Some of you have been worried about what you're going to do about this, worried about what you're going to do about that. You've been confused, you've been tormented, you've lost sleep, you've lost weight, or you've ate too much, and you've been carrying around the answer in your pocket. Or in your pocketbook. Amen. 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 You sit at the kitchen table trying to figure your budget out. And a little one cent penny has your hands. In God, we trust. That's what it boiled down to. Jesus completely trusted God. Do we really trust Him? See, I don't believe that we do like we should. I think we say what we know we're supposed to say. We're supposed to say, God's going to take care of it. And then, Wednesday or Thursday, we start to doubt. Well, I hope God's going to take care of this. Well, now Sunday, when you were in church all fired up, God was going to take care of what happened between Sunday and Wednesday. In God, we trust. Why do we keep hanging on to what we want? Instead of saying, okay, God, forget what I want. Let it be what you want. I don't want anything in my life to be what I want. Do I have wants? Absolutely. I want to be the perfect wife. I want to be the perfect mother. I want to be sweet and nice to people all the time. I want to weigh about 25 pounds less. I wouldn't mind having a sports car. I wouldn't mind having a metabolism where I eat crispy cream donuts every day in the If you 
you are confused. Do you really trust him? Some people have more trust in their bank account than they do in Jesus Christ. Some people have more trust in a person than they do Jesus Christ. Look at what happens in the Christian world when some of these TV evangelists fail. Some people stop going to church. That shows you where their trust is. Because the truth is, we all will fail each other sooner or later. Don't look at me. I want you to look at him. Amen. That's where you need to put your trust in. God is saying, do you trust me? Do you trust me with your dreams? Anybody here got a dream? I was talking to the team the other day about some of the things that I, I see a vision for. And she looked at me like I was crazy. I said, I have a dream. So did Mark Luther King. And look at what I'm being accomplished. Are you ready to put your dreams in his hands? Are you ready to put your finances in God's hands? Are you ready to put your relationships in God's hands? Your friends, your family, your children, yourself. God is not the author of confusion. And if you have been struggling and you have been tormented in your mind because you are confused and you just don't understand, you don't know what to do, the enemy is trying to tear you down and God brought you here today to tell you all you need to do is trust Him. He may not bring you the answer today, but I guarantee you, oh, He's never early, but He is always on time. Always. If you are confused today, there's three principles. Stop and recognize that God is good and He will 